My name is Andrew Sharpman, and together with my friend and colleague Alan Belkin, I'll soon be starting a series of online videos making up a complete Harmony course. The content will be similar to that found in most undergraduate Harmony courses, but the approach will be very different. Specifically, it'll be based on fundamental psychological principles, as opposed to historical stylistic ones. We're doing this because too often existing Harmony courses leave students feeling that Harmony has little or nothing to do with their main activities as performers or composers. Our approach makes Harmony relevant to these music practitioners. Now, there are some good Harmony textbooks out there, but they typically don't connect classical Harmony with more recent compositional styles, and they often talk about Harmony as though it has little or nothing to do with rhythm, timbre, tempo, and other dimensions of the music, when, in practice, all of these things work together to create musical character. In addition, many of these existing textbooks are prohibitively expensive, so we thought it was time for some free online content, which, in addition to being good for your bank account, allows for many things that paper textbooks don't. The course will appear one lesson at a time on YouTube and on our website, linked here, where you'll find additional study materials to support your learning process. Hi. My name is Alan Bilkin, and I'm the other half of the Applied Harmony team. Our new course is called Applied Harmony for a reason. Instead of presenting Harmony as only having historical interest, we focus on its relevance to performers, composers, and theorists and musicologists. So what does this mean exactly? Well, for a performer, understanding Harmony is all about what needs to be emphasized. Where are the salient events that need to be underlined? A performer needs to understand how the music is structured and what creates its character so as to communicate these things effectively to the audience. Without this knowledge, the performer is like an actor reading a text in a monotone, or even worse, accenting all the wrong words. A composer needs to understand how to create rich musical textures. Harmony is, at its core, all about how to organize these musical situations in ways that make oral sense. If harmony is taught as we present it here, that is, derived from basic psychological principles, what the composer learns won't be limited to one single style. Issues like punctuation, variety of harmonic tension, and so on, apply to any music that's meant to appeal to musicians and music lovers. This is true both for concert music, as well as music for films, video games, and so on. For theorists and musicologists, classical harmony provides a golden opportunity to look at music from the common practice period in detail. It can also help them to understand how and why a piece is put together in a certain way. Many aspects of musical form depend on harmonic events, and the fact that the psychological principles referred to here can be transferred outside of the common practice period suggests much fertile ground for new research. So let's be clear now about what our Harmony course is not. A good Harmony course is not about labeling chords, nor is it about learning an abstract discipline that has little or no relevance to what performers and composers are doing today. And it certainly isn't about blindly following quote-unquote rules without understanding the reasons behind them. These are among the problems we're trying to address with our new approach. There are also several topics we won't be dealing with at all in this course, so it's worth mentioning them here. We won't discuss microtonal harmony, nor will we discuss harmony for unequal temperaments. Our focus here is on classical harmony, but remember that that's just one example of more generalizable musical psychological principles. So you can expect us to refer to more recent compositional practice, as well as to video game and film music. By the way, Please note that many aspects of modern harmony have already been discussed by my colleague Alan Belkin in more detail at the link below. We hope you find our course to be useful and thought-provoking. For students who follow it seriously, doing all of the exercises, and having their work corrected by a competent teacher, it should be at least the equivalent of a standard undergraduate harmony course. Before we go, a brief pedagogical note. We're trying to provide the best harmony course possible for composers, performers, and music theorists. But harmony is a skill, not just a matter of absorbing some intellectual concepts. That means that quantity counts. Doing one exercise per chapter is nowhere near enough to achieve real skill. 
Also, you'll need somebody to correct your exercises and to provide musical suggestions. Our suggestions in the upcoming videos should give you many ideas for your own work, but you'll still need a qualified teacher for this kind of feedback. Okay, that's it for now, but we hope to see you back soon enjoying our course on Applied Harmony.